tough to find a Republican who isn't running. Scott Walker announced his candidacy at an event just outside of Milwaukee today, and you may have heard about one of his opponents, a guy by the name of um, Donald Trump. <laughs> Joining me now is McKay Coppins. He is a senior writer for BuzzFeed. Chris Moody is a senior uh, producer for CNNPolitics.com. And Maeve Reston is a CNN national political reporter. So good to have all of you here this evening. I'm going to start with you, McKay. Uh, you were at Scott Walker's presidential campaign announcement today. He's a 15th Republican, I believe, to jump in the race. It's hard to keep count of them sometimes. How are all these candidates responding to Trump taking up all the oxygen? I mean, it is a real problem. You know, Scott Walker has been polling in the top tier of the field for a while. Uh, but most of the candidates, after they announce, uh, have gotten some kind of bump in the polls because they can count on a week of nonstop media attention from the political media, and, and that puts their name out there, and it gives them a little bump in the polls. Scott Walker, by virtue of announcing after Donald Trump has entered, uh, entered the race and kind of sucked up all the attention, uh, is probably not going to get that same amount of, uh, of media focus that the other candidates have gotten. And, and when he does, he'll probably be asked to respond Respond to something Donald Trump said or talk about some issue that Donald Trump has raised. So it really does affect the rest of the field. Mm -hmm. Maybe other Republicans are being forced to respond as well. Listen to this. I think he's hijacked the debate. I think he's a wrecking ball for the future of the Republican Party with the Hispanic community, and we need to push back. Look, I'm not going to take the bait and get into a discussion about the presidential campaign. Clearly, most of the candidates. Uh, have disagreed with uh, uh, his uh, assertions with regard to, to our border, and certainly I disagree. Hmm. May has the GOP figured <laughs> out how to respond to him yet? Well, I think what's been really interesting about this debate is that we've seen uh, sort of the responses across the spectrum. Uh, Jeb Bush, who Trump has attacked personally over and over again, uh, came out and talked about how, uh, you know, how wrong his comments were and how he was personally insulted by them. Uh, then you have others who have been quieter. Obviously, Lindsey Graham has been talking a lot about what the Trump effect will be on the way that Republicans are viewed in the immigration debate. So this is giving the candidates a, a chance to differentiate themselves from one another um, in how they respond to Trump. And I think the one thing that we should all be watching for is some of them maybe kind of holding their powder a little bit, waiting for the first debate when they will potentially be, will most likely be on stage with Trump, uh, and will be in front of lots of people and could potentially confront his comments at that moment when, when lots of people are tuned in and watching. Because as McKay said right now, it's very hard for any of them to break through. All right, Chris, so I've heard a lot of people come on this program program and, and I've seen people on other programs and all across the media saying oh you know it's a flash in the pan he's just you know he'll be gone and all of a sudden he's leading in the polls is there a disconnect between w reality when it comes to Donald Trump that people may actually be listening to him and that he has a message and everyone else is just discounting him and they're wrong well, I think one of the big questions is whether the poll is Donald Trump's floor or Donald Trump's ceiling. I think a lot of Republicans would hope that it's certainly his ceiling. Uh, he's been able to get his message out in a way other candidates haven't been able to through uh, the media, as McKay mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, and, and people have been receptive to it, but also a lot of people have uh, been opposed to it. You see him going to other communities, different but Chris, hang on. Let me say this to you. The loudest voices aren't always the majority. And as I sit here and I watch this Donald Trump thing, it keeps getting bigger and he keeps getting better or higher in the polls. All of the loud voices are saying, you know, making fun of Donald Trump, but then the actual people who are going to vote for him are taking him seriously. So who's, Don, who's the fool are these here? Actually the are these actually the people that are going to vote for him? I mean, when I was talking to pollsters over the last couple of weeks, they keep saying that the people who like Trump in these surveys are among the least likely to vote. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily uh, the hardcore people who are going to show up in Iowa, in New Hampshire, in South Carolina. So that's what we're going to have to wait for and see over the next year. I mean, it's it will take some time to figure out whether or not he can sustain this. And as Chris pointed out, his unfavorables are really high. So while everyone else has room to grow, he really doesn't have much room to grow. Go ahead, and Kristen. when he goes into other sectors of, of the conservative movement or even into libertarian groups, he went to Las Vegas and spoke at Freedom Fest. And the, the editor of Reason Magazine, the libertarian magazine, said it was the worst speech, he, or the dumbest speech was his words he'd ever seen in o almost 20 years of covering politics. So can <laughs> Donald Trump bring the conservative coalition 
together that backs the Republican Party? The answer is probably no. McKay, why are you laughing? Well, I, I mean, the, the thing, the fact that we're, we're sitting here talking about him is exactly what he wants. He is essentially a political torch juggler. I know he wants that. I'm McKay. Right? I know that. I know day, that. But I, listen, I, I, I understand no. what you're saying. Okay, go ahead. As long as you understand my point. <laughs> no, I understand yeah. what you're saying. All, all I'm saying is that, you know, when he talks about this silent majority, he's, yeah, he's polling number two in the polls, but he's polling at like 12%. He's number one in some polls. At, at, at most. Sure, but but we're not talking about a majority of the nation. We're not even talking about anywhere close to a majority of the Republican Party. The, is, there I was mean, a line in an article about so Donald Trump the other about day where name recognition. Said, yeah, and so summer polls for candidate celebrity candidates like this are as perishable as ice cream cones is what the washington post you think said. people don't really know the name jeb true. bush i want to fast forward think, to two I think, months i think people know the name of jeb bush i think people know uh scott walker especially with the whole union not like thing. trump but there I mean, is nobody not even like donald close trump donald Trump's trump had a prime time tv show for years mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at this. This is what uh, media mogul um, Rupert Murdoch tweeted. He said, Mexican immigrants, as with all immigrants, have much lower crime rates than native-born, uh, e.g. El Paso, this example, e.g. El Paso, safest city in the U.S., uh, Trump wrong. So he's known to be a conservative kingmaker. He's even calling out Donald Trump. So what does that tell you? Chris, I'll let you weigh in on this. Well, he, first of all, he's, he's right. Uh, if you look at the statistics, uh, they do show that uh, immigrant communities that come into the United States are, are less dangerous or commit less crime than native-born. Um, but also, in, in the media environment, it doesn't necessarily matter as much because you get one story, one terrible, tragic story where someone is hurt or killed by an immigrant, and, and that it rises up to, to the top. So you can see how, while the data kind of bucks the conventional wisdom, that doesn't always have as much of an impact. Um, but you could also see Rupert Murdoch possibly change channeling uh, to, to Fox News, possibly, and saying, hey, Donald Trump has had his day. Um, maybe let some other people get in there. I think that could be part of it as well. I want you guys to listen to this. I'm going to play a moment from Trump's speeches in Arizona where he tells, I wonder if this tells you something about how he views the world. Listen to this. Like when I went on dates, if a woman dropped me, which happened often, <laughs> I would always like to say, or at least in my own mind, that I dropped her. <laughs> you know what? I will let the only woman on the panel respond to that. Maeve, go ahead. That's not fair. Are you kidding me? I don't even know how to respond to that. And honestly, with Donald Trump, most of the time, I don't have any idea what the context is of what he's talking about. Yeah. So I can't help you with that one. All right, McKay, you want to you try? Well, I'm surprised that Maeve doesn't want to weigh in on Donald Trump's ex-girlfriends. I, I mean, I, I think that... There absolutely is something about Donald Trump. Uh, when when I, I, I profiled him uh, last year and I spent some time with him, that he definitely has uh, a something about him where anyone who, who distances themselves from him, rejects him, uh, disses him, it automatically becomes a loser, jealous, pathetic. Uh, and, and, and so, it, you know, no matter what they, he thought of them before. So that is certainly part of this. I think that's why when he gives speeches and gives interviews, he's constantly personally attacking the other candidates by name uh, because if they say anything about him, he, he will go to war with them. That's also what makes him entertaining uh, for, for the political media, for television. Okay. But it's not necessarily a recipe to build goodwill within the conservative movement in the Republican Party. And that's one of the many reasons I think that this is a, a flash in the pan situation. And I right. don't think in two months or three months he's going to be uh, anywhere near where he is right now. In the you poll. shall see McKay, Maeve and Chris. Thank you. I appreciate it.